What's up guys, in this video we'll be training our fine-tuned mobile net model on images from our own dataset. And we'll also be evaluating the model by using it to predict on unseen images, so let's get to it. From the work we did together in the last video, we now have a mobile net model that's been built and tuned to be able to classify images of cats and dogs. We're now going to train the model, observe the results, and then use the model for inference to evaluate how well the model predicts on images that it didn't see during training or validation. We're here in the same notebook we've been using so far in this mobile net series, so make sure you have all the earlier code in place that we went through together in the previous videos. Recall this model object is the fine-tuned mobile net model that we built last time. On this model, we're first calling compile and specifying the atom optimizer with a learning rate of 0 0.0001. We're setting the loss to categorical cross entropy and our metrics just include accuracy. After our model is compiled, we're now going to train the model by calling fit generator. To fit generator, we pass our training set, which we stored in the train batches directory iterator we created last time with Keras image data generator. We're specifying steps per epoch to equal four. This is just how many batches of training data should be yielded from train batches to complete one epoch. Since our training data is made up of 40 images total and the batch size is 10, then we're setting steps per epoch equal to 40 divided by 10, which equals four steps to complete one epoch. Next, we set the validation data parameter equal to our valid batches object. And similarly, we set the validation steps but since our validation data is smaller than our training set, the steps are only set to two here. Next, we specify the number of epochs to run and we're going to go with 30. And finally, we set verbose equal to two, which will print out an individual line with performance metrics for each epoch. Now I've scrolled down to the bottom of the training output, but we can see after 30 epochs, our model is performing extremely well on classifying cat and dog images with a 100% accuracy rate for both training and validation. If you download the notebook yourself, you can check out how the results progress over time by looking at the full output from training. So yeah, this is great. With the minor tuning we did to the model last time, it's performing very well on this new task. Next, we're going to use our model to predict on images from our test set that it hasn't already seen during training or validation. Before we run the predictions, we're going to get and format the labels for the test set, and we need these just in order to plot the confusion matrix we'll see in a few moments. We don't actually need the labels to get predictions from the model though. So first we define this test labels variable to be equal to test batches dot classes. Calling classes on test batches is going to give us the class names or the labels for each sample in the test set. This is the reason we specified shuffle equals false for the test batches in the last video. Because since we'll be using these static labels that are returned from test batches.classes, we can't shuffle our test data each time we use it for predicting because then the labels won't map correctly to the data. So if we print out test labels, this is what it looks like. The first five samples in the test set have labels of zero, and the second five have labels of one. But our data is images of cats and dogs, so how do we know what these zeros and ones correspond to? We can find this out by calling class indices on test batches. This gives us the mapping from the underlying class names, cat and dog, to the zeros and ones. All right, we've got our labels taken care of. Let's now get some predictions. We define this predictions variable to be equal to model.predict generator, and we're passing in our test batches, and we're setting steps equal to one. Steps is specifying the total number of batches to yield from test batches before stopping the predict generator. Since the batch size for test batches was set to 10, and our test data set is only made up of 10 images, that gives us a step size of one, since 10 images divided by a batch size of 10 is one. And lastly, we're setting the verbosity here equal to zero, which is just not going to print out any output. All right, so once our predictions are finished, we need a way to visualize them. So we're going to plot them in a confusion matrix, and we'll be using the scikit-learn library to do that. If you're not generally familiar with confusion matrices or you want to learn more about working with them, check out the earlier videos in this playlist on using scikit-learn's confusion matrix. 
So first we have this function called plot confusion matrix, and this is what we'll be calling in a few moments to do the plotting. And this code was pulled directly off of scikit-learn's website, so we're not going to go over the details here. Next, we create this confusion matrix object called CM, and we're setting this equal to scikit-learn's confusion matrix that we imported at the top of our notebook. And we're passing it the labels of our test set, as well as the prediction results stored in predictions. Calling argmax on the predictions is going to return the indices that contain the maximum values from the list of predictions. So because we only have two classes, it will return either a 0 or a 1 for each prediction in the predictions list, whichever one contains the higher prediction. Here I've printed the class indices from test batches again because we'll need to see this output when we write our next line. Here we're defining the labels for our confusion matrix, and these need to be in the order that the class indices are in, so that's why I printed it just above. Then we call the plot confusion matrix function that we referenced above, and we pass in the confusion matrix object, the confusion matrix labels, and we give it the title of confusion matrix. And from the results, we can see that these predictions were spot on. For all five cat images, the model indeed predicted cat, and for all five dog images, the model predicted dog. So the model scored a sweet 100% on all the images in the test set. So our fine-tuned model overall did a really great job on the task of classifying images as cats or dogs. Next, we're going to build and fine-tune another mobile net model, but this time it's going to be on classes of images that weren't included in the ImageNet dataset that the original mobile net was trained on. So we'll likely need to do a bit more tuning than what we saw here. Stay tuned to see how that model holds up. If you're following along with the code yourself, let me know in the comments how your mobile net model is holding up to any fine tuning that you're implementing, and I'll see you in the next video.